In this video, I'm going to continue summarizing the quest lore that you may have skipped reading in Howling Fjord. Now, this zone is really long and has 12 chapters to it. And we've been covering this for a couple of weeks now, so if you missed the last episode, then go ahead and click this link right over here. But if you're all caught up, then let's jump in and find out what's going on in World of Warcraft. Since things are done with Scalawag Point, it's now time to focus on the Tuskar situation at Kamagua. So your next quest is to help them make more weapons. And that starts by gathering the Chimera Horns which are located in the snowy parts of this island. So you make your way out of Kamagua and head to the top of the mountains. And when you get there, you kill Chimeras until three of their horns drop. Then you make your way back to the village and report with Elder Atuik. He says that you continue to prove your worth as an ally and that your actions will not be forgotten. Now Elder Atuik says that the pirates who took over the village of Iskal have completely lost their minds. And if you need a little refresher, this is the village that they came in and started kicking all the people out or killing him, so there's a lot of displaced people coming into Kamagua from there. But yeah, basically the pirates there have started killing their captives. So you need to head over there and kill eight North Sea Slayers. Plus, Elder Atuik gives you a horn that you can use to summon or call the Tuskar to help you out. Now you run out of the hut and make your way to the village of Iskal. And once you get there, you engage in combat and kill eight of the crazed pirates. Once this is all done and you've made a complete bloodbath of the whole place, you head back to the village of Kamagua and speak with Elder Atuik, in which he says that his people will forever be in your debt. Now you run up to a Nuniak, and he says that something really terrible has happened in Moakai, which is located all the way in Dragonblight. So he's wondering if you wouldn't mind going over there and seeing what's going on. But since that's in a whole completely different zone, we're going to do that quest a lot later. From here, you head all the way up north to Camp Winterhoof. And when you get there, you speak with Chieftain Ash Totem. And he's surprised that Nanak, who was at the lift area right outside of Vengeance Landing, found someone to help out up here, which is you. And he wonders how you got here without a guide because Tonka are the ones who really only know this land. Now you run up to someone named Ahoda Whitefrost. And he says that they're actually planning on leaving this post. But where they're going, there's a possibility that a storm can hit them at any minute. And we're talking like cold blizzard storms. So he wants you to gather the spotted hippogriff downs, or rather their feathers. And by doing so, they can make what they need in order to combat the freezing temperatures. Now you run up to Nokoma Snowseer. And she says that her people have been hunting the yetis in this area for generations. Now she's about to participate in her very first hunt before they abandon this area. And to prepare for this hunt, she needs a horn crafted from a a dire ram, which can be located in the snowy area. So she wants you to bring back six undamaged ram horns, and then she'll choose one that she can use. And this is important because the horn sound mimics the mating call of the female yeti. Now you run up to Wild Tamer Kagan, and he says that in order to survive here, you need to challenge the elements head on. He also mentions that before his people can leave this post, they must cull the elementals one last time. So he wants you to kill eight mountain elementals, either being howling cyclones or ice shard elementals. Now you leave the post and head to the area with the hippogriff downs and the rams. Once you get there, you collect the feathers as well as the horns from the rams themselves. Then you show up to where the elementals are and kill eight of them. Once that's done, you head out and make your way back to Camp Winterhoof. When you arrive and speak with Wind Tamer Kagan, he says that the influence of the elementals has receded. And that buys them some time to wrap up a few things before they leave here. Now speaking with Nokoma, she says that she'll pick out the best horn that you brought back for the hunt. And with the rest of the horns that aren't going to be used, she's going to give them to the craftsmen so they can work on their carvings. So she crafts the horn and whatnot, but now she wants to test it and she's looking for your help to do so. So yeah, Nokoma needs to test out this horn before she can put it into use. So she hands it to you and says that Ahoda tests his at the waterfall to the northeast. And now she wants you to head out there and see if you can attract a female yeti by using the horn. Nakoma also talks about these things called frost nymphs and how they've been hidden away in the wilderness. But these days they've come out of hiding and Nakoma wants to know why. So she wants you to travel to the frozen glade and seek out the nymphs. But she warns you that you're going to have to pass through the twisted glade in order to get there. Lastly, you run up to Ahoda Whitefrost and turn in the hippogriff feathers, which she rewards you with some spare gear and says that these feathers are really going to help out in the long run. Now that those initial quests are done, we move on and speak with Sage Eden. He says that to the east at Giant's 
each run, there are these gigantic stone giants. And they usually migrate north towards Frostblade Peak. Also, the interesting thing about these giants is that they have these runes that are glowing and they're kind of carved into their stone skin. Now, some of the giants are laying dead on the ground and Sage Eden wants you to use this pickaxe that he gives you to extract the runes from their bodies. It'll deactivate the runes and whatever magical properties they have on them, but once you've tested quite a few of them, he wants you to come back and tell you what's going on. Next, you run up to Huant the Wanderer. He says that some undead expedition made its way close to here, and they unfortunately are kind of infecting the land. So he wants you to head to their location and see what their purpose is for being around here. And hopefully you can dissuade them from bringing their poison around in this area. They're located to the southwest towards the cliffs overlooking the western beach. And their camp will be west of the excavation at Steelgate. Lastly, you run up to Long Runner Pemby. And he says that Chieftain Ashtotem dispatched him on a scouting mission to Giant's Run. And he found iron dwarves over there, altering the giants as they emerge from the ground. Now the iron ruined stone collars and binders carry these large tomes with them. And they're using these to carve runes into the giants. So he wants you to capture pieces of these books and assemble them together. That way we'll understand their plans. Before we continue, I just want to mention that if you're enjoying this content, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell icon icon for notifications and give it a thumbs up because it does help out in the long run. And if you feel like getting deeper in this community, I stream right here on YouTube every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So come check it out. Usually it's during the daytime. I don't just play WoW. I actually gather all this information during the stream and we talk about WoW lore and just other stuff. And then usually Thursdays I'll play WoW and keep on working on that lore master achievement, which is gonna take a very, very long time to get. And lastly, if you really, really wanna support the channel, then consider signing up for the membership. We like to call it the Order of Lore Masters, and you do get your own grimoire, and it levels up as long as you stay within the membership itself. If you have any questions, then go ahead and check out the link down below, and don't forget to check out my social media, and specifically my Discord channel, where we're all kind of talking about a bunch of stuff and having a good time. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now you make your way out of here, and first head to Giant's Run, once you get there, you kill dwarves until you have all the pages for the book. Then you deal with the giants and mine out their ruins out of their chest using the pickaxe. Once that's done, you make your way towards the frozen glade. And when you arrive, you speak with Luriel. And she says that they've watched the Tonka try to look for them in the past, but it's forbidden by the nymph queen to interact with anybody else. The only reason that you're seeing them now is because the land has become unsettled and many of her sisters are unfortunately in danger. Luriel says that the ice elementals surrounding the glades used to be their companions, but now something has made them turn on the frost nymphs. This is the reason that they've come out of hiding and she was hoping that you could help them by gathering the cores of the elementals in hopes that the nymphs will be able to restore them back to what they were before. And specifically, she wants you to bring back 15 of the icy cores. So you head out and gather the 15 cores, and once you have those, you report back to L'Oreal. And she takes the cores, and when she does, she sadly tells them that she promises that she'll do everything she can to restore them back to their original form one day. Now L'Oreal says that there's another glade, and the nymphs over there have kind of lost their minds. She even tried to speak with them and they attacked her. So she wants you to take her pendant and head to the Vibrant Glade and use it to try and free her sisters there. Also, the Scarlet Ivy that the nymphs used to tend to have also been affected by whatever drove them mad. And basically, they're getting out of control. So before you can take back the Vibrant Glade, you need to take out a good amount of the Ivy. Now you make your way towards the Vibrant Glade. And when you get there, you kill eight of the Scarlet Ivy and use the pendant on seven of the nymphs to release them from their madness. Once that's done, you head back to the Frozen Glade and speak with L'Oreal. She's grateful that there's hope for her sisters, but she's sad that she didn't think about using the pendant before, because maybe she could have saved more of them in the past. As for the Scarlet Ivy, L'Oreal says that there was a time when the Vibrant Glade was a beautiful place, and when they return to it, she's gonna try and make it beautiful again. Now, L'Oreal mentions yet another glade, but this one seems really, really bad. To the west lies the Twisted Glade. Basically, she doesn't know where the creatures came from that made this place so horrible, but she wants to clear it out before the poison there makes the glade completely irredeemable. Also at the Twisted Glade, there used to be a bunch of keepers there that with the sisters tended to the upkeep of the glade. But when everything changed, the sisters died and the keepers stayed alive. Now they see the land with these poisonous spores that are killing off the greenery. So L'Oreal wants you to take one of the ice crystals 
crystals from the ice cores that you gathered earlier, and use it to freeze the spores and stop them from regenerating. Now you head out to the Twisted Glade located northwest of here, and when you get there, you kill the creatures in the area, as well as the spores using the ice crystal to freeze them, so that they don't regenerate anymore. Once that's completed, you head back to the Frozen Glade and speak with Luriel. She says that you've done well, and if they had had more allies like you in the past, then maybe they could have preserved some of what they've lost. As for the ice crystals, she's pretty surprised that they worked on the spores, but she's pretty sure that the keepers won't stop just because you destroyed their work once. Now that you've seen the Twisted Glade, Luriel wants you to take out the head Black Soul Keeper, whose name is Witherleaf. Once he's dead, then the nymphs can reclaim the land. So you head back to the area, kill Keeper Witherleaf, then return to speak with Luriel. She says that her heart broke when she learned that the Keepers had turned against them. They were once considered brothers and friends, and without your help, there would really be no hope for the future. And she mentions that you'll always be welcome around here. With this quest turned in, you complete the eighth chapter in the Howling Fjord questline. There's still a lot of quests that we haven't touched, so we'll continue with this zone next week. So far, this has been one of my favorite group of quests to cover because it just feels like a real true adventure. But again, we'll have to wait till next week to find out what happens next. I also want to give a big shout out to the Order of Lore Masters for supporting this channel. Your membership contributions really, really help in progressing this channel and making it better and allowing me to create more content for you guys to watch. If you'd like to join the Order of Lore Masters and get your own grimoire, then go ahead and check out the link down below. And with that, I'll see you next week when we take a deeper look in the Tales of Azeroth.